All right, let's go over what's going in the trench. I just went to pick this stuff up in West Virginia. It's about a four hour ride for us one way. So it was an eight hour haul, but it saved me about $800 of shipping. So I think it was well worth the trip. I just did it in one day there and back. I went to pick this up at Menards. It was a dollar something a foot. I got 1800 feet. There's six rolls, 300 feet each. So this is two inch polyethylene, um, has really good chemical resistance. This is gonna be used for the wastewater that's going from all the way at the house site down here to our septic system. So this is the main component that's going in that trench. I have couplers that will be, we're only gonna need five couplers for this whole thing. So that's that, that was a big component. Let's show you the other stuff too. All right, here's the next component guys. This is our high speed internet fiber line. So on our telephone lines, they just installed fiber through a federal grant. And I called the company, believe it or not, this is it. So it's just two tiny, tiny wires in there. Um, and it's gel filled, I believe. But it's like the wires are sticking out right here. There's a blue and an orange one. You can't even see that. It is so small, it's ridiculous. I really thought it would be something bigger, but it's not. Anyway. I called the fiber company and I said, I told them my situation, what I'm doing. And I said, I'm, I got a trench open. Can you um, tell me what wire I need to get so when the time comes to turn on my service, I'll have the right stuff already in there. So I talked through a couple different people. One guy said no, the next guy said, let me get somebody above me. And then finally I talked to the right guy and he sent me 2000 feet for free. So depending on who you talk to, I guess if you ask and don't get the right answer, ask again. So, yep, I talked to the manager and he sent me this stuff and that saved me a lot of money. Um, but anyway, that will go in the, that's a direct burial line. Doesn't need anything special. They are digging trenches all over Virginia right now with this stuff in it to provide rural households with uh, high speed internet. So that's gonna be wonderful. All right, here is the last component. I just put this stuff down here. It's rain since, but I've had this stuff for like two weeks now. This is some PEX B. I have one inch PEX B. Um, and again, it's 300 foot rolls. I got six of them, so 1800 feet. I did a comparison, PEX A, PEX B. PEX B seems to suit my needs. If I'm careful with it, um, it doesn't have the best kink resistance as far as like comparing it to PEX A. But at this diameter, I don't think I should have a problem at all. Um, and again, it's, it's polyethylene, you know, just like that black tubing. It's just, this is cross-stranded, so it's a little bit stronger. It has really good PSI. So as far as pumping it uphill from the well, it should be able to suit my needs. And this is the stuff that I used from the well to the shed when we initially did our infrastructure for living down near the camper. So um, connecting these things together, I am going to be obviously running at the trench and we're gaining uh, elevation here. So, um, we're gonna put a check valve every 300 feet. So every time I connect one end to another, we're going to include a, a check valve, which will save the well pump. So when it's pumping and pumping and pumping, it's, you know, it's a one-way ticket. When it sends water that way, it can't come backwards. Um, it's definitely something you need. I don't know if I need five of them, um, but before I backfill the trench, I'm gonna turn the pump on the well and make sure it's delivering water correctly before I close everything up. So, we will see. Let's get to work. <sighs> Got the cold hat on. It's that season again. It was windy a few days ago and a lot of leaves have, have fallen. That's a pretty view, look at that guys. My roadway is all covered up with leaves. There's a lot of maples and poplars over here. But anyway, we got the excavator right over there. Um, the trench where I stopped the drone last episode goes this way above where I am here and it goes and, and just kind of dips down. So you didn't miss much. I could have put it underneath this ditch, but I was afraid that I was going to encounter a lot of rock because this is our creek. Not running right now, um, it kind of trickles, but um, when it starts raining, this thing really flows. And that is only maybe, geez, 24 inches and you got a good rock base there for that natural creek. And then this stuff, you know, I need it. It's just, I don't have enough depth here to dig. Plus this is, I don't want it to erode away and then expose the pipe. So I put it about 10 feet above me up there 
there's kind of a flat area. And uh, I just dug the trench through the woods that way, found the path of least resistance, and it came out down here. Let me show you. Came out down here. Um, so I was up there and I made a kind of a steep jump right here. And now I'm next to the road just for a second before I cross the road right here. And this is what I just did. And I got to do this two other times. So I got this pretty deep. This is over three feet deep right here. And we are going to sleeve this with some four inch pipe. Um, not scheduled for you. There's this other stuff. I got to go to Kingsport and get it. So Yanni is sitting there straddling the ditch. I'm going to maneuver him out of that precarious situation. And we're going to take him up the mountain. And we're going to make some more. Uh, we're going to connect all the trenches together. Because I, I didn't cut it across the road in case I wanted to get by. But now's the time. We're going to start laying the pipe. So, you know, do or die, right? Oh, look what I got, guys. I forgot to even mention this last episode. So I got these used. This is going to hold our, is it potable or potable? Whatever, drinkable water. Um, so these are IBC totes, is that what they're called? So they're like 300 gallons a piece. We're only gonna need one. And then the other one I'm gonna use for job site water for the concrete mixing and all that stuff. But this is, organic contents and it contained sunflower oil. Now, if you do any research, you're gonna, at first I was like trying to shop and, and buy one of these new, you're looking at like 800 bucks. I got these for $75 a piece. They're pretty much brand new looking and they still contain a little bit of sunflower oil at the bottom. So we're just gonna do a, a hot water and Dawn rinse out and then I'll probably disinfect everything, sanitize everything with some chlorine um and that one of these whichever one's nicer we're going to put it in the root cellar and that is what the pump the well pump is going to deliver water to so we'll have that much water on hand at any given moment um so the pump doesn't have to run the well so often after this we're going to have a booster pump next to it which will grab that water pressurize it and send it where it's being requested in the house the wood boiler or in the office all right, let's take this big guy and let's head up the mountain. some boom pressure down and I could swing this undercarriage a little easier. There we go.
Maddie got sprayed by a skunk yesterday. Poor thing, she doesn't know what happened. So that's the first skunk we've had on our property, but poor Maddie. Um, and I did the hydrogen peroxide baking soda and like a couple drops of just dish soap and it worked really well. It took most of the funk out. And uh, there's still residual, you know, but anyway, she'll get another bath later. So anyway, this next segment, what I wanna do is take you in the driver's seat of this thing. I know a lot of channels, like they, they feature excavators and stuff, but no one really shows you like how exactly to do it. Like what they're doing, the controls they're faced against and kind of the strategies they're doing. I just kind of wanted to take you first person and uh, get a shot of like what I'm doing here. Let's hop in. This is Tyler's Yanmar Vio 55, 55 horsepower Yanmar. It's, it's, it's very new, only has like 400 hours on it. Um, first thing I wanna show you, there's two ways to control an excavator like this. Well, this, this style anyway. There is backhoe mode and there's excavator mode. And there's a little door right here. And there's two options. I don't know what OPT stands for, maybe option and STD I imagine is standard. Tyler has it in option. There's also the standard, this is like excavator normal controls. This is more like a tractor backhoe controls. So Tyler and I both have backhoes um, on our tractors. Tyler has a Kubota tractor, like a 40, 50 horsepower tractor. And he's used to those controls. So he puts this machine in the same kind of coordination with the joystick. So let's hop in and I wanna show you the whole experience here. Let's open the window. All right, so machine is started like any other machine. And now what you would do is take this safety control, put it down and you have access to your boom. And this is your stick and bucket. And what I mean by that, your boom is this big thing that goes up and down and left and right. We do a swing. Um, and then your bucket and dipper stick. Dipper stick's kind of the elbow forearm, and your, your bucket is this here. So, um, let's do the left joystick. Left joystick, up and down, is just your boom going up and down. So I'm gonna put my plow down so it's a little less shaky. So it's just back and forward. Now, the difference between an excavator and a backhoe is when you turn, a excavator your whole cab swings like so you go for a ride and the bucket's always like right in front of you now on a backhoe you would kind of experience something like this when you swing you'd be swinging the boot and the way I'm doing that right now there's a foot pedal down here now these are normally just foot rests but if you flip this up it's got a swing for the boot which you could do right and left and that comes in handy. All right, but so it's swing and boom up and down. This joystick here is like I said, your dipper stick. It, you can extend it out, that's forward, this is back. And then left and right, this is left, curl your bucket in, right is curl it out. So combining all those things together, you could reach and scoop in and you know move things around like this and it's, uh, you just get used to it. Your mind does it without even thinking. Um, this little button's a horn, and then this toggling is your auxiliary um, hydraulic foam. That's good for picking up trees and, you know, rocks, stuff like that. Uh, your travel position is going to be somewhere like around here. You want your weight forward. And um, then we got the plow in front of us. So this is a four-way plow. You pull it up, which is this joystick over here. That's our bucket and dipper stick. This is just our plow. So our plow, that puts the plow down, that pulls it up, and then there's two buttons here and here, which tilts the plow, respectively, left and right. All right, another thing over here, there's an engine speed control. This just throttles you up. I, honestly, so this is idle all the way on turtle. I put it about there, 25% when I'm digging. You really don't need much more than that. Okay, there's various buttons over here. They do things like your windshield wiper, your lights, eco mode to save fuel, don't know what AD means, and this is your burn off button. On this screen here, shows you hot and 
hot and cold, engine temperature, hours, time, how much fuel you're burn, burning. You could put it into bunny mode, which lets you travel faster. I gotta make sure Maddie's out of the way. All right, we're traveling. And if I take it out of bunny mode, see it really slows down. Put it back in. So it's got two, two modes of travel. Okay, so driving. Driving is very easy. You got a left track and a right track. You push this stick forward, that's your left track. It moves that track. You push this foot forward, it moves your right track. You could pull them backwards at the same time to travel backwards. You could push them forward at the same time, travel forward. You can put them opposite directions to do a zero turn. And you get the idea. I usually just use these hands and I kind of move things around like this to steer. Um, but you can also flip these little feet pedals back like so. Sorry, sorry Tyler, it's a little muddy, it just rained. Not hard, but anyway, you could flip those back and drive with your feet too. Like that. It's a little shaky. But that's how you travel. Flip those back up. Because a lot of times you're traveling and you still want to work this boom. Um, but you don't always have to travel with your, um, your blade in front of you either. You could swing around. And now you're, you know, you're driving backwards, but you're literally going forward. Your controls are backwards, but you can certainly do it. This is a good way to travel if you are um, going up a steep incline. Put your, heavy, put your heavy boom in front of you, reach out a little bit, counterweight yourself, travel up the hill, and you also have the plow behind you in case you get into trouble, you can just put that plow down. I guess let's go up the hill. Let's get something done. Hope you enjoyed that simple tutorial of how to operate an excavator. Okay, we made it to the top, guys. The house site's up there. Matter of fact, check out... Can you see that? Look at that colored tree right there. It's like a salmon color. It's right next to the house. It's pretty cool. Get to see that every year. But anyway, I am having one heck of a time finding a... So this is the trench goes that way and then this is a super messy part of the trench but any there's so many boulders it's ridiculous one is right in my way that I got to fight with but this one I tried going that way I tried coming this way now I'm trying down the middle and it's <laughs> I almost have this one out it's gonna be a massive boulder so I thought I'd turn the camera on let's try to get this guy out
just broke a pin on a tooth. Hopefully I didn't break the tooth. And hopefully I can find it. There's the tooth. Okay, tooth is fine. Holy monkey sauce! All this for a trench? I mean, it's bigger than me. Well, not really. Look, Mom. That's pretty stinking heavy. We should just leave this one exposed somewhere. Just to remember this battle. All right, let's get this back on the bucket. Here's the tooth. Tooth goes on like that. You know, the worst part of it is you gotta clean the tooth out before you put the new pin on. But if a tooth is gonna break off, it's nice if it's on the end like this because you could take this tool and just knock it through. That was easy. Wow, the other part is just gone. All right, here's the pin. Back goes to the back of the bucket. And the front has this like, whoop. Just kind of locks in place, but that's super duper flexible, strong rubber. All right. See all that gunk in there? You gotta get all that out. I usually have Autumn do this for me. Let's see, see, because you won't get it in all the way. Ultrasonic would be really good right now. Stick. See, it's just so caked in there. It's like a brick in there. Piece of cedar, maybe. It's working a little. Here, let's use the old pin and our handy dandy pliers. Tyler, I like these pliers. All right, let's use that combination. Let's try to reach in there. There we go. Ooh, that's working good. Tyler, I'm gonna throw this in your toolbox in case you run into this issue. All right, let's get the tooth back on. Let's get the pin back facing back. Let's put that there. I'm gonna do a little tip tap, tip tap. Let's see. It's really all there is to it, guys.
I figured while I'm going up the hill, bring one of these rolls with me. And it's kind of wet, so Ricky does good in the mud and muck. Alright. It's really not bad. This is going to be really awkward. I'm wondering if I should lay it down. If I lay this down and ratchet tie the front of it. Like wrap it around here to the loader. That might be better. Let's see. Crushing the tube anywhere. Get out of the way. See if Ricky's got it here. We'll try. Good job, Ricky. Oh. Maddie, what do you think? Huh? Are we nuts? We're nuts. Okay. Stand it up right here. Get this machine going. Put a rope on it. Swing it around. Dance with it a little bit. Be good for it to grab. All right. Look, Meg, I'm putting it away. I'm not going to run it over. All right, let's go get a rope. I want to tell you a story. See if I have a rope up here still. See that ladder, guys? The ladder's there for a reason. I had a rope in that tree. That's a maple tree, and it's pretty tall. It goes way up there. We're next to the family tree. See it? All right, here's my rope where I left it. So the trench heads this way, crosses the driveway, goes downhill and heads south toward and through the orchard. I was trying to go from the orchard. I was trying to fly the drone up here and kind of show you my, you know, when I was going through the woods, like what section I'd be working on. And I got the drone stuck in this maple tree all the way to the top. So a few, a few days, I couldn't see the thing either. And, you know, you can't make it make any noise or anything. Like that. So I had a little bit of battery left, right? And what I wound up doing, I got into sight of the, of the camera and made note of where I was. I was like, okay, it can see me right here. I was waving my arm, and then I kind of went like this until it looked like I was pointing right at it, but I still couldn't see it. It took me days. Meg came back from a business trip. She went to Chicago for a little bit. She came back. I brought her up here. I said, it's somewhere, like, around there. She goes, it's right there. <laughs> so, but that wasn't the only challenge. It was 60 feet up there. So I put a, I climbed the ladder, like, to a reasonable height. And I attached that red rope right there, and then I put a chain on it, took the excavator, and just swung the boom until this thing was shaken. Probably was like, what is going on? And the drone fell from the sky, and we charged it up, and everything was okay. I mean, it's like an $800 drone. I bought it years ago, but still, I didn't want to buy a new one. It's like a, what do I have, a DJI Mavic Air 2. All right, where would I put my rope now? Here we go. So, just a little fun story for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Maddie, I'm going to tie you up, honey. I got a rope. Don't tempt me, Frodo. That's the end I want to pull. Uh, to get some slack, too. Okay. it easy huh I feel like Sonic I'm kind of scared. like if I go through this am I gonna turn into something else all right Carmen in case something happens honey just tell mom okay we're good we're good nothing happened Heck yeah! Oh man, I got to transport it with this thing. It's easy. All right, here we go. All right, we just need a small amount of rope here. But yeah, ooh, one slice. work. Jeez, I'm going to be exhausted later. All right, so that other tank is going around here somewhere. Guess let's cut the tape off. Uh-huh. I, I, I kind of feel like a hamster. There we go. Let me get it over that first hump. <clears throat> there we go. I don't want to be shy here. All right. All right, see if it'll behave now. There we go. It's a matter of getting started.
All right, Autumn. Let's roll. Let it. Nope. Now I get it. Don't break the tape. Just push them down so that they don't lift up. You're going to need to push down pretty hard. Step on it. Yep. Good. Stay like that. Can you stay there for me? I'll try. All right. Look, it's the shed, we're almost there. All right guys, last one. There's the shed, there's the end of the trench. And it all goes to this three inch PVC here. So I put this here when we first did our septic tank in thoughts of today would one day be here. And today is the day. So I know exactly where to excavate. And there's just a little elbow and a riser and a cap. And um, we'll be able to tie in this pipe with a just a PVC adapter and a reducer. And then this goes all the way to the septic tank, which is located right there and I know nothing is toward this way of the shed any electrical work or anything like that was always done this side So I got about at least, maybe 150 feet extra. Cool. I'll use this in various places on the property. The first thing that comes to mind is a drain for that root cellar. And I think it's just going to be a gravity drain. They're going to have it open one end and lower on the other. And just like a descent and have it go down the hill if any water were to get into the root cellar. And that way we're not reliant on anything electrical. Oh, can you see her? Hey, Meg. Oh, I ruined the surprise. Look through the pipe. There she is. <laughs> we got her, folks. All right, so. Meg in the house. It is Sunday. Right, Meg? Mm-hmm. You could talk. <laughs> it's weird having a microphone on, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we got six of these total. These are 10-foot... Uh, SDR 35. These are just for um, sewage water, but they're strong enough to sleeve our infrastructure lines. Um, so anyway, we're having two of these, so 20 feet total to, for the road crossings. I'm going to sneak in the, the uh, two-inch pipe and the, well, everything really. Let's just run the line and then we'll snake it on. That's what I want to do, okay? Okay, tell me what to do. Are we bringing the green ones up there? 
No, the green ones should stay here because we got to, these get slipped on and they come here. Oh, the other ones are going to get the other on ones get slipped up. on in the same spot and go up. We got about maybe a hundred feet to slip them up. Okay. So let's go start up there, get the pecs and get, get it down to this point. All right. I'll let's grab go. the uh, fiber cable. Okay. You used to always have a blade in your pocket. You don't do that anymore? Sometimes. <laughs> Come on. Do you want it? Yeah. It's a good uh, thing I'm here, John. Good thing I just got my tetanus shot. <laughs> yeah, that one's kind of sketchy. Yep. Get yourself a Meg, get yourself a blade. All right, here's the technique, guys. You have your rope to keep it all together. You gotta grab the leading coil and kind of roll that and then just pull the rest along. Like so. There's Meg, there's the ditch. It's a Megan a ditch, it's a mega ditch. You look like you got a long tail. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Meg. Yeah. Poor kid. I guess I'll be nice and go do the other one. <laughs> it's going to hit you in the face. Ow. There it is. All right. There, I could pull the pipe. Why don't you pull that thing? <laughs> yeah? See, this would have been great to have the bell end. That's what I'm saying. That would have been great. Let's go switch it. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'll say it every time. Yeah, baby. Watch that root. Yeah, baby. Laying pipes. Oh, John. Yeah. Oh, no. No, baby. Oh, you, you face planted into a big hunk of mud. No, it's a root. You would have wanted to go in the pipe too. You know, guys, this part of the whole like do everything yourself, owner builder, sucks. Okay, but Meg and I try to have fun with it. Like we make fun of each other, like whose butt crack is hanging out, <laughs> or like how we should have put the bell end first so it'd make a little less friction. Uh, you know. You just gotta kinda laugh at yourself. That's the secret. Okay, write that down. Oh. <laughs> this is a Meg Grum. John, you don't have to hold that end anymore. Yes, Go I do. Hey, Go get the other one. Go to the top, I wanna tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> hey Meg, you're doing great. <laughs> Roll number two. All right, I, I got as far as I can with this thing with the machine. I'm thinking if I put it over my shoulder, I'm gonna give that a shot. Well, the reel's getting lighter.
just uh, knocked you over. But nailed it. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm connecting the lines together now, okay? We gotta connect the one inch lines and the two inch lines. The one inch line is the water. Um, so for the water, we are putting a check valve between each parts of the line, every 300 feet. Now, you might be asking why? Why don't you just put in one check valve? And I have a theory, I don't know if it's correct, but we pump water from that direction, that direction, up the hill 200 feet over 1800 linear feet. So 1800 feet, um, one foot of water in a one inch pipe is about a third of a pound. So you do the math there, over 1800 feet, you're looking at 600 pounds of water that's sitting in the pipe. Asking one check valve to hold all that weight when the pump turns off to prevent the backflow, that's just a lot in my mind. So breaking that over five check valves in six segments, respectively, that would be asking each check valve to hold about 100 pounds of water, which is more realistic in my eyes. I don't know what the PSI would be 200 feet up, but I think it's a little overkill, but I'd rather it be more than not enough. So we're putting check valves in. Um, after we put check valves in, I have this stuff. This is underground wrap by PEX or by Sharkbite. And this stuff is intended to be installed directly in the ground. It's supposed to protect all the brass from any chemicals in the ground and prevent corrosion. Makes it last a lot longer and it keeps it under warranty. Not that any of us ever use that stuff, but anyway. So on each end, we're gonna slide the PEX in and then we attach it with a stainless steel Oedeker clamp like so. We use this crimp wrench, which opens up like, like this and you ratchet it closed and it pinches it to the correct pinch position. So it's kind of mindless. Uh, what else did I mention? This is what I'm cutting the PEX with, one of those guys. The two inch line, I had no idea what to cut it with, so I went old school and just whipped out the old box saw. It's got a fine blade on it and it cuts through the polyethylene pretty easily. And you get good results. You just have to chamfer out the inside with like a razor knife or something like that. Um, and then attaching the polyethylene tubes, we have these two inch PVC couplers, which are made in Canada. <laughs> and I use these stainless steel hose clamps. And I think what I'm gonna do, I put the hose clamps about here. I think what I'm gonna do is go back and double up every one of them. So I just don't have enough. I wanna get this all connected. But you might only see one on each side, but there will be two. Um, and then I also sand down the inside of the polyethylene with some sandpaper, so. All right, let's go, uh, let's do it. Odeker. Check valve pointing in the right direction. Things are tricky. If I were to do this all again, guys, so running this PEX especially, I would, I'd straighten it out first. I'd make an uncoiling device and then I would straighten it out and leave it exposed in the sun for a few hours under tension, a little tension, not a lot, and get this bend out of it. Goodness gracious. I'm supposed to pre-measure it. I'm gonna go over the stainless Odeker connection too. Let's see. Like so. So in a few hours, this stuff will chemically bond and create a permanent seal. And that 
tape, as expensive as it is, I will spend the $20 on the roll and do that instead of having an issue in a few years. All right, guys, what an amazing, huge accomplishment and sigh of relief, really. I've been thinking about that trench and where I'm going to put those lines for years now, and it is finally come and gone. This week, I'm going to backfill everything, and uh, next episode, I'm going to share how we're going to request water from up there all the way down here and turn on the pump. So I have a solution for that, and I'll share it at that time. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. See here. All right, guys, for this next part of the video, this is ridiculous. Look what I got to do for you. Don't judge me, okay? I'm trying to bring this entertainment to you. All right, that's the super basics of how to operate this big hunking machine. Hope you guys enjoyed that for those of you who have never known how they would. <coughs> Maddie. God, I hope she just gets a mouse already. There's definitely one around here. Ugh. I'm gonna tell her to go home. Back in business. Tyler, you see this weird piece of metal in your toolbox in the in Yanni? That's what it's for. I'm gonna call this the John 5000. Available soon on our website. Okay? Alright, Tyler, you could have the prototype. One here and one there, and it's just kind of wrapped around that. Oh yeah, let me tell you, Carmen, you can probably reach them. Yep, that vulture is definitely in, in range, honey. Hey, did you get them?